All right, hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games, and welcome back to part eight of our Brazil campaign here in Herbs Martin for the Moe Order. So, a lot of stuff has been going on, so we're gonna jump right in. The army's ultimatum. Out, out, came the crimes, the cries incess incessantly. Uh, honorable members of the legislature, silence. Members of the legislature, the Republic has stood without leadership for weeks now. The nation is adrift, rudderless. Those who should have captained it squabble like children. The former president, Kubitschek, stood up, asked by what rights the soldiers had come. The general turned aside his gaze from the socialist snake back to the rest of the assembly. The men of the National Army has always stood as guardians, as defenders of the Brazilian nation. We cherish its democracy, yet we will not let it be used by greedy and ambitious men while the republic crumbles. The legislature failed to confirm Mr. Goulart as the next president in the order of succession. It is its prerogative. However... No progress has been made on nominating a new leader for the country. The brave soldiers of the National Army implore the Assembly to solve this current crisis within three months. So this is that you got a hundred days that it's been talking about. So, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, it's it's it's. They're saying, look, we're loyal, and things are getting a little crazy. But we're loyal to the nation, not to a person. Having said that, you get to figure this shit out, or we're gonna have to step in. Um, the general blinked away the irritant. We were the, were the honorable members of the legislature to fail in finding a president within those hundred days, and the consequences would be most unfortunate for our nation. The people's mandate will be respected. Yet the people have not elected for their representatives to make a mockery of the nation on the world stage. Gentlemen, we expect a solution within a hundred days. Brazil must be shepherded through these dangerous times. A final reign of jeers. The general walked away in concern. Those clowns would do as instructed or they'd be held to pay. So... So, uh, now we have the 100 Days Crisis, which is going to give us a new focus tree here. And, whoo, as you can see, a lot of things just changed. So now we're in the shit, and someone's got to shovel it. An unexpected development in Brazil's current constitutional crisis has occurred today. Army commanders led by General Silvio Frota have issued an ultimatum to the legislature to end the current anarchy within the next 100 days. Implicit in the Army's command is the threat of a military intervention were the civilian leaders to fail in solving the crisis. The Republic left headless after the resignations of President Lott following the corruption scandal over the Trans-Amazonian Highway and the following resignation of Vice President Quadros following the acceptance of a resignation letter. What began as an attempt by Vice President Quadros to seize power has turned into the gravest constitutional crisis since the end of Vargas's dictatorship. Brazilians of all political stripes have called for their leaders to end their clash before the generals run out of patience. Will they manage to pull together? Okay, Brizolia in Brasilia. Lionel Brizolia, governor of Rio Grande do Sul and a powerful member of the left wing of the PTB, was preparing for the struggle that was coming. The former president, Enrique Teixeira Lott, had been toppled by a plot of Quadros backed and then backstabbed by Andrade Lacerda and Edhemar. But his daughter Edna, a more moderate Vargas, a v Varguist, but not moderate enough to form part of her father's party, remained in the fray. In fact, she was still fighting the good fight in Brasilia's Camara dos Deputados to ensure that João Goulart attained his rightful place as President of the Republic. Now the two had met for the first time, and far from engaging in mere small talk, were discussing what the next steps were. Well, Edna, we will have to hit them in this direction, attempting to usurp the rightful succession of Goulart as set out in the Constitution. That makes sense, Lionel. I also know a few people I can pressure. Many members of the PSD are reasonable, and I could reach out to Neves if we need to. As the discussion wore on, Brizola and Lot found they disagreed on a few things, namely the direction Goulart would take when she took power, but agreed on much more important things, such as the need to protect the Varguist and constitutionalist order in the Republic of Brazil. As the day wore on, it became evening, and as Lot and Brazilia made more progress in discussing the matter at hand, one thought took more and more precedent in their minds. I could work with this one. So, a lot of stuff just happened. We opened up the new uh, tree, and uh, we have the decisions tab. So at this point, I only was informed enough and did a little bit of a test run enough to just get us to this point, to the 100 Days Crisis. And now I haven't talked about who it is I'm actually going to be going for. Um, and, uh, I, I've decided, um, purely on the basis that I might be able to make some fun thumbnails with it to go with, uh, Edamar de Barros, uh, which is the, uh, Miss Nagatoro character, um, who has become, you know, it's become a very, very popular, uh, 
uh, anime lately. I actually was um, recently at my local Barnes and Nobles looking for a different book. They didn't have it anyway, um, <clears throat> and they had a they had a, one of those tables out where it's showing recommended readings uh, for people. And uh, the there was a, a like volume of you know please don't tease me Miss Nagatoro out on the table which I thought was very interesting. It just shows how anime is increasingly becoming mainstream. I just thought it was kind of funny. Uh, anyway, let's uh, figure out the game plan here. All right, so first off, Brasilia paralyzed. Uh, the hundred days crisis has begun. President, and by the way, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to successfully do it, but I'm sure going to try. So we're going with Adamar. What is Adamar anyway? I haven't even looked at what her ideology is. I just went with. Okay, so Adamar de Barros. Uh. Let's see, Adamar is any of the leaders. Right now, we're technically authoritarian democratic, but we have legislative gridlock. Uh. Okay, here we go. Brazil is facing an unprecedented leadership crisis while the Senado scrambles to settle on a new president in the next hundred days. Husseliano Kubitschek, uh, who I also considered, Jao Goulart, Carlos Lacerda, and Edmar de Barros call in favors and strike deals to try and come out on top. Once a contender reaches 50% support, the Senado will confirm the appointment. Currently, Lacerda leads with 33.3% support. Um... Military threat of intervention dangles over the Senado, a sort of Damocles ready to strike if the 100-day period elapses or the political situation grows too unstable. So, uh, Adabar also has the least amount of support with only 20%, so it's going to be a good challenge, I think. Um, yeah, military is getting a little restless right now. Uh, restless. Feckless. Um, so, uh, nobody sees control. The military using the officer as the mouthpiece gives the yeah. This is just, okay, okay. So it's the the PSP who is Adamar. That's uh, that's who we're trying to get. So the PSP is uh, who again? The PSP or the PSD? I don't know. Whatever, whatever ideology. Who cares about ideologies when we can have cute thumbnails? Like, like I bet if I looked up Nagatoro. Uh, Nagatoro wallpapers, uh, we could have some fun. I'm just looking it up now. Images. Oh yeah, there's there's potential here. Definitely. Uh, maybe one every episode, a different one. <laughs> just for fun! For the, like, ten people who watch this far. The old general had seen better days. Denny's watched his friend deliver a speech to assembled young officers. Enrique's lot self-confidence and determination had long given him an iron aura. Nowadays, however, the aura was dented. The assembled young officers were of the generation that grew in the shadow of Vargas' regime. To many of them, the army's moment of glory was its ousting of the tyrannical president. The hundred days left them dismayed. Had the army not overreached beyond its constitutional bounds? Um... Disgraced as he was politically, Lot still held respect in the military. Many did not believe the accusations of corruption among the young officers. The former president was still personally popular. And while his star had dimmed, it still shone bright. Lot exhorted the young officers to stay true to the Republic, to reject the Sorbonne's attempt to unseat uh, the constitutional order. The speech was over, and Lot took questions from the assembled officers. Having failed in my obligations, I turn to our youth, to you. If I must crawl and beg for your generation not to repeat my own mistakes, then so be it, concluded the old general. It heard him speak, but would he listen? So loyalty goes up. Uh, oh, we could do an addressing of the nation. Public address to ease worries and stave off military response. Uh, it'll give us some stability. Well, we're at negative 24. That's probably good to get. All right. Brasilia paralyzed. The air had grown unseasonably cold in Brazil of late. Even as tempers run hot in the national legislature, Brazilians huddle carefully around radios and televisions. Fear has returned to the country. A thousand overlapping gusts of wind leaching hope for the future from all throughout the Republic. The sudden cold snap auger to a brewing storm has uh, obscured the future to all. In Brasilia, the factions play their games. Chief among them is the PSD's Kubitschek. 
With the ascension of Gular to the presidency as replacement for Quadros and Lot forestalled, former President uh, Kubi, I'm going to say Kubichan, Kubichan uh, supporters arguing that only has the capability to ascend to the presidency with the army's time limit. The political right is weakened by failures. The, okay, etc., etc. There's an instigator, Rio del Sul. Yeah, the, the winds blow cold in Brazil, and the coming storm is not likely to have a happy conclusion. In the shadow of your wing, I will take refuge. Deep. That's a reference to the augurs uh, thing. Um, so it looks like what we gotta do is do crow and bull, and then unlock decisions to secure support. So yeah, we want to come this way. The Sarada and Adamar are not friends by any definition of the term. Even if one catches them agreeing on something, they will react with denial if they hear claims they're in fact in agreement on their topic. It's not like I agree with you or anything, but baka As the crisis rages and the deliberations begin, the tension between the crow and the bull can be felt from easily half a kilometer away. Oh, what happened? What happened is we hit midnight. Oh, jeez, the, the war in South Africa! What have they ever done to us? So, with all that out of the way, does anyone have questions? GET FUCKED! Uh, Gilmar smiled awkwardly at the profane, uh, shriveled farmer woman at the front of the crowd. What was she, 80? Uh, whatever she was, she led the coalition of local farmers, natives, and incredibly bad-mouthed elders that showed up in force to brigade Gilmar's announcement. You cut my goddamn farm in half, jackass! How many more trees are you gonna chop down, dumb fuck? One of your idiot workers let my cows out! They're fucking gone! Probably time to make an exit. Was she holding a rock? Uh, thank you, that's all. Asshole! Running from a crowd is an unusual for Brazilian bureaucrats, so we're hurting- that's hurting our political power gain. We are now officially getting negative political power every day. Alright. Let's see, let's try to do a little force attack here. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to, uh, you know, widen this here so they have less of a place to retreat to. Actually, I'm being foolish. I should be coming this way, maybe? No, no, I do have to keep this guy pinned down. Oh, dang it, we've been cut off there. <sighs> How annoying. Where's the closest port to the north? Luanda. Uh, it might be a little far away. Let's instead try coming this way and uh, get a link up there. Although I think we are still getting um, supplies either way, so it's not a huge deal. Uh oh. So many events happening! I keep li lagging because of it. Dress the nation again. I think we're not going to do that. Um, yeah, we just we need to save the political power, uh, which I'm sure we're going to need in a minute. Oh, well, that's awkward. Uh, Adamar sauntered into the office, ignoring the staffer's meek protest. She found- so this is, uh, Nagatoro. Adamar is Nagatoro. So swaggering in with this face, just <laughs> Um, Adamar sauntered into the office, ignoring the staffer's meek protest. She found Lacerda sitting straight at her desk, staring into the distance. Two phones were precariously balanced on piles of papers at the edge of the desk. Unusual to see the usually disciplined Lacerda so, keep so tidy in office. Anyway, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Adamar carried on. I didn't come all the way here to enjoy your sunny personality. Kubichan is screaming bloody murder, and every day more pansies in the legislature are starting to listen to her doom mongering about the army. Not to mention that Golart is, Golart is irrelevant and stuck in the south. Why don't you pick it up, my friend? It'll be good news. Those bureaucrats you tried to bribe are probably coming around to your side. This time, Lacerda's anger went out. You fucking piece of shit! Get out! Uh, Adamar knew how the other man felt. The phone rang. Lacerda sighed, picked up the line. Adamar's smile deepened. Both had much work to do. The start of a beautiful friendship. All right. Adamar de Barros is of the view that bribes and corruption will be more than sufficient to allow her to gain power. To that end, she will bribe and blackmail as many senators, congresspeople, and other such political riffraff as humanly possible, digging up skeletons from closets faster than a land developer desecrating a cemetery in order to obtain their, willing or unwilling, support for her candidacy. At the same time, she will go out and harangue the public all over Brazil in order to obtain their support for her presidency. The combination of corrupted politicians and adoring for civilians will be more than enough, Adamar thinks, to get her into the pal Palacio de la pl do Planalto. Okay, but we also do have a war in Africa to fight. 
Yeah, the, the military out here in the choppers are, uh, you know, I'm just trying to kill Nazis for God's sake. You know, it's a, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're Nazi killing pills. Like, they don't care who's president as long as they get their ammo. Okay, now we come down here. Dang it, this freaking. Alright, we gotta hook west. They're trying to break through, and yeah, the, I'm really having the south- OH GOD, THEY TOOK CAPE TOWN! Fuck me! Alright. We need to have one of these divisions start heading south. Uh, how close is South Africa to capitulating? Oh, man. Oh, shoot, 92%. Oh, man, we might have to boot up a save file running around too much up here. The damn AI doesn't know where to send their infantry. The ports of, the streets of Porto Alegre were absolutely packed with people. Uh, they were here to see Joel Gallard. So we're going to kind of skip some of the, the candidates that I'm not really supporting. So the energies... It's, it's like when I do Comey, you know? I've played Comey several times, but I haven't read all the stuff because I... Oh, okay. Gumilov's in charge. Uh, so they're kind of in a similar situation where it's another they're deciding who to ally with, who, who to specifically run with. But, um, you know, I don't read everybody's events, uh, because if I'm not going to be playing as them. Maybe in the future. It's true the PSP are second fiddle to the UDN and PTB PSD in terms of political power. But what they lack in numbers, they make for in loyalty to and fervor to their leaders. She hope, all she hopefully has to do is hold on to the broad rails and cruise down an easy road to power on the back of her loyalists. So, this should have opened paths for that, right? Or support decisions, do I have to wait till midnight? Yeah, there we go. Secure support. There we go. Through favors, whoops. Through favors, political promises, and shrewd negotiations, we could build support among the senators who will decide the presidency's fate. So, slightly increased support for five days. So, I already, from the stuff... We're only at 21.8. Oh, very bad. Very bad. Uh, where's that 100 days crisis? I just, dang it, I would like for it to have the actual date. That would be nice. Leading contender receives significant boost as deadline approaches. Unlocks decision to buy backing. We'll have to hope we could work this out. All right, but South Africa is a little bit uh, the priority right now. Is this a core of South Africa? Yes. Okay. If we can get here to Port Noloth, Noloth before uh, any of these other areas get taken, we should be okay. I'm like, not even caring about supply chains back there. I'm so worried right now. Yeah, Croatia went down. Pretty typical. Hmm. Uh, industrial organization, da, da, da. I don't know about all this stuff. Um, probably should pick some kind of land doctrine or whatever, I don't know. Actually, let's come down here and get the helicopter stuff. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ustase defeated, yeah. We've seen it before, and we'll see it again. Alright, alright, alright. There we go, there we go. So now if we look... How much has that averted the crisis? All right, that got us 12% back. It's something. Okay. The singing of songs, the marching of boots. This is a Lacerda thing. Um. Sedation. There's radical goddamn cro croaches disrupting the lives of the good citizens of Brazil. <laughs> well, you better hashtag deal with it. Um, we can buy, yeah, the effectiveness of bribery is good. Promise budgetary allocation and special financial arrangements. Uh, okay, so last stand. We got to hold here for a second. Where's their capital right now? East London. Oh, is it Johannesburg? Do they get this as a core? Nice. Okay. Or no, it's good. No, that's the Boer Republic. Never mind. Technically back. Back again. Look who's back. Something 
friends. Yeah, let's see, we don't really have a cutoff here. See, I just... I advanced too much too fast, and that's exactly what I was trying to not do. Uh, so then the freaking... They can't keep up. Uh, the doggone... Um... Uh-oh. Hang in there now. Hang in there. Dang, they're hitting me with like three divisions. So I'm getting pushed pretty hard. Yeah, so the, the South African infantry basically couldn't keep up. So I think we're going to have to basically... Um, Capitulate the Boer Republic again in a very awkward manner. Uh, too much too soon. Too late and now it sucks to be you. At logistics. Oh, what's going on now? What's going on now? There we go. Our chromium trade is gone. Get it right back. Come on, keep securing support every five days. Uh, we're still not even in the lead. We gotta remember to check back on that every five days. Nope. Stop that. Just kind of zigzagging everywhere. No, I should swing west to actually get Cape Town back. Yeah, come back down here. These helicopters are going all over Africa. <laughs> uh, we gotta make our way back over here somewhere. Let's take a look at the casualty counts of this war so far. What, how, how much damage have I, in fact, been doing? So, yeah, they've lost three times as much, but they have a whole lot still in the field, so those, uh, those encirclements aren't working out as well as I want. Actually, this one has kind of just gotten all screwy, so not actually going that, no, not actually going that great. I gotta get my two helicopter divisions back together. We're no stranger to dirty tactics. She prepares an alternative method of persuasion, digging up closeted skeletons. Alright, so we could buy backing. This hurts stability and increases the national debt. But we now have taken the lead. It's good. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But once again, I don't- I just don't think we're getting everything fast enough. The Raging Fire and, uh, Rainstorm. So we want this one, whatever's the bottom one. The Sarah just smiled. Uh... You see yourself as being fit for Brazilian leadership, but you're not fit to run a car. They're sneering at one another. Yeah, we'll find a successor elsewhere. Oh, that was huge! That was huge! It actually just looks bigger than it is, but we're up to 32%. Very nice. Kubichan is basically irrelevant already. Down to 15%. Yeah, once we take back Cape Town, we gotta get over here to capitulate the boys again. What a freaking mess. What a mess of a war. Damn it. Ugh. The Serdis speeches. Gotta convince Brazilians of whatever. Uh. Come on, break through over here. Oh shoot, they've got helicopters too. Not good. Yeah, this is a this is a total freaking mess down here. Just awful. Okay, we can still develop things. Uh, working on that, whatever. And uh, I think Tomsk is doing the final mopping up. No, there's still Nova Sibirsk, yeah, so they're going to People's Revolutionary Council. Okay, we're done here. Now we gotta come north. And these ones, we're trying to get over here. Actually, I messed that up because they 
coloring, but... Peace conference is over. Where? Where? I know it ain't South Africa. Himmler, victorious in the English Civil War. I thought I already said that. Oh, because they, they weren't done with uh, Cornwall. Yeah, so, got the transitional government set up. Uh, let's try to come down here. The oration! Cure more support. Let's see if people stood up in the plaza in the early hours of the morning. The center directed the crowd's restless energy from a makeshift plat- ship- plat- SHIFT platform adjacent to the plaza. Who is to blame for this crisis? Vultures, fraudsters, felons. The liberals and socialists have spent our country to the border of ruin. The desert they have made of Brazil they call a prosperous republic. Is this Brazilian population not entitled to truth, to honesty? My friends, the end of this period of crisis goes through a return of normalcy to politics. There is no hope for the future of the nation but the joint PSP-UDN ticket. As long as I stand, I will continue the fight for our nation's future. But this fight we cannot let win alone. So we can basically increase the support of the soldiers, which would get their loyalty pretty doggone high. Or we could say we can't do this without farmers, or we, could do, we can't do this without workers. Uh, so who's the more, who's the stronger one? Okay, we've got, I could either hurt Golart or Kubichan, so... Golart is stronger. That's the one we need to hurt a little. And it took like 2% away. Press offensive. Achieve enlightenment. Okay, we got one helicopter division here. Where's the other one? Oh, yeah, right here. Right here. Right here. Come up this way. Oh shoot, not good. Not good. Not good at all. Hang in there, hang in there. Get north, gotta get north. No supplies coming through. I really screwed this up. Like, I have other divisions I could send out, but I'd rather not have to do that because there's no delay. Fuck me. Come this way and then this way. Ah, they're counterattacking me! No! And then I'm gonna have to go over the river! Shoot. We're gonna lose them. Looking good, we're in the 40s. Kubichan is basically irrelevant. Uh, schedule expansion. It's so expensive. Yeah, we lost them. Okay, fuck me. Um, got one more I could do this with. Alright, then you gotta stop. Let's focus the seven coming back up here. Dang it, they were waiting there. Ah! Yeah, I, I just I just overstretched, plain and simple. Nixon's resigned, so things are really gonna start getting fun out there. I'm really worried about these divisions out here. Oh, they took a uh, Quillamane. Well, hopefully they hold on to it. Uh, Old Staff has 44% to work capitulation. Got to focus on um, killing their divisions. As we kill their divisions, it'll allow advances to be made easier. Old Devils! Uh, Lacerda was dismayed to be meeting with that day's visitor. There's a mid level bureaucrat within the PRP, a man of uh, modest caliber. 
PRP would soon be consigned to the history books, yet in these historical days, Adam Ard insisted he and Lacerda look everywhere they could for any edge in the fight with Kubi-Chan and Golart. The PRP's offer of support was enthusiastic. The Integralists would support Adam Ard and Lacerda. The price was non-negotiable. Beyond, uh, beyond the shame of being publicly associated with the PRP's fascist fummies, Adamar and Lacerda would need to guarantee that upon victory, the exile of Plino Salgado would be reversed. The Integralists and Chief himself would come home. Um, Lacerda sighed internally. Having Salgado mucking around would be more disagreeable. Uh, we're actually not going to do this. He can wallow in self-pity in Iberia. I don't think it's a good idea while things are unstable to invite the Integralist home. I don't want to accidentally end up getting cooed. So we're just going to take the political power instead. Guys, we have other ways of um, getting support. 41.9% well, as we enter the Ides of June. Kind of zigzagging everywhere. There's my other unit. We gotta capitulate the Boer Republic again and then just stabilize. And they're losing a lot of this stuff because they don't have it filled in, but we just need to. We should have. We should never have like left South Africa so unguarded. I should have helped them kill that one pocket that was here in the southeast. We saved lots of pain than going through. Now wherever time is running out, there are only a few days left before the 100 days comes to an end. And Silvio Frota and his military goons go through with their threat. At this point, ideology is thrown out the window in favor of a pragmatic decision. And avoiding the disaster that would be a military intervention is of the highest priority. To that end, previously undecided senators are beginning to coalesce behind the leading candidate despite whatever disagreements they might have with that individual. Six. Oh, I don't think I've been min-maxing buying that support correctly. Uh, Borman just beat Spear. Oh, uh, yeah, I think Borman's got this. Gurring's on his back foot, and there's about to drop. Excuse me, Hydric. And there's up here. So I think that's going to be... Wow, that felt like a really fast episode. So much going on. Uh, so in the next episode, yeah, it will be now or never. And then um, there's only five days left. Two days, we're going to see what happens. I don't know how big a boost we're going to get. We could end up being in trouble. But I'm conquering history games, and let's see if uh, Miss Nagatoro will be in charge, or perhaps we're going a different route. See you then. Bye.